What up, Biscuits? This is Absolutely Boxing with Nick and Joe. I'm the King Biscuit himself, sopping up all that boxing gravy, and I am full from last night, Absolutely Joe. Joining me right here shortly will be the demented mind of Nikolai Luthar. Nick Fisher will be in the house right here, breaking down all the fights from last night at the 2300 Arena, hard-hitting promotions, Showtime Boxing, event of the year, the whole night did not disappoint. The atmosphere was completely and utterly electric. Nick, for some reason, I can't bring you on. Last night did not disappoint. Uh, just hard-hitting promotions, victory boxing promotions. Uh, so many people involved last night, 2300 Arena. Uh, shout out to George Hansen Jr., their whole team. Um, just <laughs> crazy. It was awesome. Nick, you're going to have to redo something there because I can't bring you on yet. Oh, there it is. Joining me shortly right here, meant to my Nikolai Luthar. A.K.A. Nick Fisher. A.K.A. Demented Mind. There he is. Look at him. How you doing? I, I'm doing great. I just woke up. It's okay. fantastic. This might be the last time I ever get to sleep in. You know what? Enjoy it, right? Yeah. So, how was last night, man? Dude, I feel like it's Thanksgiving. Like it's like Thanksgiving at like um, five o'clock. You know, you're like, whoa! Like I just got mm -hmm. a big heaping helping of boxing goodness last night. It was off the chain, man. Yeah, the 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 bottom half of that card, you know, where all the prospects usually are and stuff like that, was really entertaining. I mean, there was a lot of knockouts in the first well, the first six fights or so. Mm -hmm. um, I got to watch that on Facebook Live. Uh, the fights that were on Showtime were pretty cool, too. So, Absolutely. Shout out to Christian Tapia checking in. Sir, we are going to cover your fight. I know, Christian, uh, you mainly speak Espanol and probably won't be able to understand this, but we're going to say all bueno things about you, Christian Tapia. He was very exciting to watch last night. And just the, go ahead. Go ahead. No, you go ahead. I was just saying, just the whole atmosphere, and I can't say it enough, like the house was packed. Everybody was in a great mood. Um, it was just, it was an event of events in the city of Philadelphia. Hard-hitting promotions is really doing good things with boxing and prospects and just promoting people out there and just bringing showtime to, to Philadelphia and be able to to have an event like, you know, so many people in the house, like Swift Jared Hurd and, and yeah. uh, Tevin Farmer and uh, Hank Lundy and just the, the people from our area, the, the great boxers from our area attending a night, like taking pictures and hanging out with the fans and doing interviews. And just, it, it was just, and on top of that, like the great atmosphere, we got a bunch of great boxing. The atmosphere is going to be great there, man. That's the ECW arena. <laughs> you know? That's all those people know, man. Got to get your rest. I love that venue. Get... And, and, and I agree with what Oh, sorry. I, I agree with what you're saying, though, man. Like, uh, just seeing all the celebrities out there, like, I, I thought, you know, man, like, good for hard-hitting, good for everything they're doing. Uh, Manny was up. They, they interviewed Manny a bunch on TV last night. Um, it was really cool just to kind of see uh, how far along that they've come. You know, Showtime picking them up last night and, and broadcasting those fights, them getting drawn in us. Like you said, with Jared Hart being in the house, Tevin Farmer being in the house. Uh, I might be mistaken. Did Bernard Hopkins – oh, you, you, would, you were there. Uh, was Bernard Hopkins there? I heard – I didn't see him, but I heard that he was there, yes. All right. It sounded like he was doing the uh, announcing on the undercards. Oh, really? I think so, but I'm not 100% I'm not positive. I, I remember thinking, like, man, is that Bernard? But... That would make sense. Somebody, so, somebody said he was there. I didn't – he must have been on the other side of the arena. I stayed on, like, the, the one side, mainly was looking for everybody, and I didn't really travel to the other side. But, hey. Yeah, yeah good on hard hitting. So – Stayed for the whole event. You were there from, from the start, from the first fight, right? Correct. So what was the fight of the night? Jumping right into it. 
Wow. Um, that's a tough one because some of them had moments. Fight of the night. See, the, 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 the uh, Tsunami Samuel Tia and uh, Kenneth Sims Jr. boss man, like, the, the, the first half of that fight, the first three rounds, like, fought like fireworks, like, like crazy. But then, you know, Sims started to slow down, and, and Tia took over, and the second half really what, what lost its, you know, it was like it was like a big roller coaster. Ah. So it was like, but, like, I, I enjoyed um, the Bulldog Benny, the Jewish Bulldog Benny Sinekin, that yeah. I enjoyed that one the most because, I, I love his style, like how he went for it. It was a first round knockout. Like he did what he needed to do. He looked great doing it. He's two and zero now, and he's just he's just a fantastic young man to talk to. And and uh, that's that's the one I enjoyed the most. So I don't have a fight of the night, but I had the one I enjoyed the most, and I had the moment that was the hypest the most. The moment that was the hypest being Benny's knockout. <sighs> Uh, no, uh, I guess the hype, the, 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 the most eruption was when uh, Enos knocked out Serrano. But you, you could tell, like, literally five seconds into that fight that that's what's going to happen. You were just waiting for it. Um, but I think the, the crowd got into the most when Sims and um, Tia were, were teeing off on each other towards the end of the second round for that 20 seconds was the, was the height of most crowd per, per, participation. But Enos, you know, I thought Serrano was going to give him more of a fight, but the speed and power and boxing ability of, of, of uh, Boots was, like, far superior to, to mm -hmm. Serrano. Uh, any – were there any decisions that surprised you last night? No. I know we only had a couple of decisions. We had a bunch of uh, – a bunch of knockouts. But no decisions surprised you? Um – no, I thought Gavin Rosa uh, beat. Uh, let me ask it more directly then. Go ahead. Did you think the Brandon Bizarro scorecards were a little wide? I'll, okay, I agree with that. I agree with that. I think that the fight was a little – I think that Bizarro won, but I think that – I think so too, but by a round. Yeah, one or two, not four or five. The one scorecard had him on a shutout. Yeah, one did had eighty, and then one that had seventy nine, I think, or seventy eight. Yeah. So yeah. Yeah. No scorecard. I, I thought that was a little disingenuous to Rodriguez. I, I thought I thought he put up a really good fight. I thought he won a few rounds here and there. Um, and Bizarro seemed to fade late. I mean, it just seemed like as he got into those later rounds, he just wasn't conditioned for that kind of fight. Um, and, and that's not uncommon with a lot of young fighters, but you know, uh, definitely something he should work on in, in going forward because. You know, we talked about last night. He looks he looks good for his age. But that conditioning's gotta come around a little bit. Absolutely. Nineteen years old, he's got plenty of time. And um Jerome uh Jerome Rodriguez, now I haven't seen him fight before, but um being when I was in press row the, the all the uh, the guys that cover the local fights more often uh than we have since we just started. Um yeah. they they have seen Jerome Rodriguez numerous times and they say this guy always always fights hard and always gives his opponent a really good uh a really good test for that and yeah so that's why i agree with you 100 percent to say that um Jer jerome should have got a little more respect off him scorecards but he still lost yeah i think so i, I think so i just wanted to, i just wanted to point that one out I, I meant to ask you about it last night but I, I don't know i got i got mixed up doing stuff so figured i'd ask you on air yeah me too i was politics not I saw that. I saw that. You'd be good. <laughs> uh, was Benny's knockout the knockout of the night? No. Um, yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> Why? Well, no. I, I, did, well, I, I know that we have to do this, but I don't want to do it. This is yeah. With, this is with a heavy heart. Um, yeah. Uh, Gledwin's, Gledwin Ortiz's. He had the knockout of the night. I think so, too. Uh, and, Kyron, if you're out there, man, just, you know, we're looking forward to you getting back up on that horse. Um, that's a rough loss. Uh, it was a good performance by, um, by Ortiz, though. Um, Kyron Hooks is obviously he's – a, he's a friend of the show. Um, so we always, always root for him, and we are rooting for him in his next fight. 
And, you know, just to break this fight down, I saw uh, Ortiz getting in the ring, and I was like, I said, who, who the frick is that? Is that, is that, who is Kyron, is that who Kyron is fighting? And I was like, he was as big and as long as Kyron, right. and probably twice the weight it looked. Like, he looked like he ballooned up to above 175, and the fight was at 154. Like, the, yeah. dude, the dude was thick, and when I saw him, I was like, this is my face. I was like, <laughs> <laughs> and, and then I see Kyron, and Kyron looked great. Like, and then to start the fight, um, they mixed it up. Kyron was using his jab nice. Uh, yep. Like he, he was starting to circle and then and then Ortiz laid some hands on him a couple of times. He, he got his body and then you saw uh Kyron kinda, you know, kind of retreat into himself and he let Ortiz come in because he felt the power. And I don't blame him. And and even even after feeling the power of Ortiz, Kyron still uh he, he threw hooks in short and it was able to spin out and he and he he was ret- I don't want to say retreating, but he was using the ring to his advantage and trying to trying to box him to stay away from his power. And Kyron threw out a, a jab, a, like, a, like a touching jab, trying to get him to – trying to get Ortiz to hit him so that Kyron can counter. But he left that thing out there a little too long, and Ortiz caught him with a direct button shot, and I, it, it, it broke my heart. Yeah. Um, and, and on your point about the uh, – about it being at Super Walter, uh, Kyron weighed in at 149. Oh. Yeah, that's what they said on Facebook. Because so I was watching on Facebook Live, uh, they said he weighed in at one forty nine. You know, I didn't even take note. You know, stupid Joe, I'm at the weigh in. I didn't even take notice of the weight, which I probably, you know. Well, I mean, like, why would you? Every time you go to the weigh in, it's always like a quarter pound under, a quarter pound, or, or they're over, and then it's drama. But it's always like, you know, a quarter pound under. I agree. So. I agree. So, all right, we're done with that. <laughs> all right. You know, shout out to David Stevenson's making his pro debut. Uh, David Stevens making his pro debut uh, looked really good. Uh, what was that? A second round knockout, I think, or first? It was a first round knockout, and first, yeah. I had an extreme pleasure of talking to this young man. Uh, he allowed me to interview him after the fight, and like two time uh, gold medal um, USA boxing team, not in the Olympics, but you know, he said he went over to Budapest and he won gold medal there at um, at heavyweight. And then he came, he won the the gold medal in the Continentals here over here in America at heavyweight. And then he shed some pounds and, he, and now he's making his pro, pro debut uh, last night. And he's a young man with a good head on his shoulders. Uh, he has a good story. Like, you know, he's a bad kid. And his parents were like, look, you can't be bad. You can learn some discipline. Throw him in the boxing gym. And he fell in love. And then the, the rest is, hit, as you say, history. It's up to this point. And then we can't wait to see um, – Good things come from him. He's from Reading, Pennsylvania. Um, he's he, he can't wait to, you know, he, he wants to fight again. Like he, he was saying, like, I want to fight right now. Like, you know, I just got done that fight. Let, let's line up another opponent like five minutes from now. I'll go fight right now. So, I mean, he's hyped up, ready to go. Very enthusiastic. And uh, we're going to be following David Stevens from uh, Reading, Pennsylvania. Of course. He spent the last month training and he fought for a minute and a half. <laughs> like, of course he's ready to go again. <laughs> <laughs> I give a lot of credit to Judd Brown, though, man. Judd Brown stood in there and threw with him. Um, it, it looked like a poor strategy, um, but but he definitely uh, he definitely went toe to toe with him. He definitely gave him an opportunity. So uh, it was an entertaining way to start the night. Absolutely. And um, also, I would love like uh, uh, Gavin Rosa. Like this young man did did not disappoint in in my opinion. I know he took he took it uh, uh, German. Jermaine Mraz. I mean, he, he yeah. was, he was a tough, he was a veteran, had a lot of like well over a hundred fights under his belt. Yeah. So he's 61, 50 and two. That's what they were saying <laughs> last night. When he came yeah. Like I was like, does this dude really have 120 fights under his belt? It, it, it was crazy. And you know, it being, I think uh, Mraz is only like um, um, 29 years old or something. Like he was, he's like young to have that many fights under his belt. It was crazy. Or 31. Either way, he wasn't like 39 with that many b- b- fights under his belt. Right. Uh, shout out to Como uh, China checking in. I'm sorry if I pronounced your name wrong, but thank you so much. Eyeballs. Eyeballs. So, Gawain, you know, what, what was the – so, Gawain's now 9-0. He's now the super featherweight 
uh, NBA belt holder, intercontinental super featherweight champion, um, nine and zero with seven knockouts. So he, um, what he did, his boxing ability, his patience, and uh, his intelligence in the ring at such a young age, at such a young career, was really telling last night. Like uses counter punches well, uses head movement extremely well, worked the body. A lot, like a lot of things that young fighters don't do, Gadwin didn't, and especially keeping his head and not allowing because uh, uh, Mraz kept trying to get him, goad him into boxing a slugfest, and Gadwin didn't want to do that. Gadwin wanted to box, so I mean that's that hats off to him for the intelligence to be able to keep his head during that fight. Yep, yep, because that veteran fighter is going to make you fight his fight, or he's going to try to, um, and if you're not prepared to, to stand your ground on it. That can go a lot of bad ways. So, outside of Jaron Ennis, because Jaron Ennis is, I mean, at this point, I mean, probably considered one of the best young fighters in the game. Who's the best fighter you saw last night? I, I, yeah, I'm going to have to go with uh, Rosa at this point. And you could say Brandon Bizarro, but he's 19 years old. And I know he's 13 of one, and he's now the uh, welterweight uh, NBA intercontinental champion. And he deserves all his accolades. He has, you know, no disrespect intended. He has some growing up to do. He has some maturing to do in the ring. Um, his one shots, like he, he wasn't using combinations enough. He did at some points, not enough. Uh, he would do like what Teddy Allen says, take a picture. Like he would, he would land a shot and he, and he thinks it's like such a great shot that it's probably going to hurt or knock out his opponent. And he like pulls it, recalls it back real slow, dramatically. Like those kind of things is what, is what gets you in trouble when you know you're fighting a, a more stiffer competition which again Jer jerome rodriguez was you know pretty good competition for him last night but he did, didn't have that will to get to to use more pressure against bizarro but so comparing those two those two actually were the most advanced out of all the prospects that fought um so i would have to go with rosa which is how he handled um the adversity of um, using his intelligence, using his ring generalships and so forth. So, but Sam, Tsunami Sam Tia, like he's uh, considered a prospect on his way to contendership. So I didn't want to lump him in with the younger prospects. And, but he obviously proves himself to be that uh, potential contender, top prospect uh, in the welterweight, uh, in the super, um, super lightweight Light. division. Yeah, super lightweight division uh, against, uh, Kenneth Sims Jr. Who's a really good boxer. He just doesn't have any power and that's Sims downfall. Yeah. And, and super lights kind of wide open right now. I mean, we're seeing that in the world boxing super series. Like there's, there's just not a lot in that division right now. So. Shout out to Joe Fate, uh, Fabi. Uh, I guess it's Fabi. Joe Fabi. Check it in. Oh, he's from Philly. He's got, he's got the Brad Lidge, Carl Ruiz, uh, pick on his uh on his avatar that's what i'm talking about yeah that's bad joe that's bad joe that's bad joe i didn't know his last name was fabby yeah fabby. what is baby. it baby 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 yeah so good i joe. told him a half hour i told him a half hour ago to tune in you're good joe he's bad joe oh good joe bad joe everybody yeah. remember that good joe bad joe right there uh oh i think um, the newly crowned uh, super featherweight NBA intercontinental champion is checking in. Uh, shout out to Gadwin Rosa last night. Gadwin, we just talked about how good you are. You missed it, but that's okay. <laughs> man. <laughs> you can go back. You can go back and check it out. Uh, but yeah, Gadwin, uh, thank you so much for checking in. Uh, you fought fantastic last night. We were telling everybody how much you use your intelligence in the ring. Your boxing ability was fantastic for how much of a young fighter you are, 9-0 and now. The NBA Intercontinental Super Featherweight Champion, Gadwin Rosa, the first of many, God willing, man. So good to see you. Thanks. Absolutely. Congratulations, Gadwin. So what else? You got anything else to tell me about last night? <sighs> Gadwin, we, we appreciate you. The one thing I do got to tell you is that I missed Gadwin. I looked all over for you. <laughs> That place is so big, and there's so many people. I found Benny uh, and, and Dave Stevens. I couldn't find Gadwin. Gadwin, I want to take a picture with the belt. I wanted to strap the belt around my waist 
and take a picture. <laughs> Guy would said I could touch it if he won. <laughs> <laughs> You're not allowed to wear it, though, man. <clears throat> I'm a champ. <laughs> that one's a champ, not you. That one is a champ. You're right. You're right. Um, oh, man. Christian Tapia, um, he, he, he has proven to be uh, one of those guys that just a top contender in the Philadelphia area. Um, he just he, – he worked so well. Wait, what does Gatwin say? Gatwin said he was taking pictures with everyone – there, LOL. I'm sorry I missed you. Hey, dude, I missed you. It's my job to find you, sir. So uh, we appreciate you, man. I, I wanted a picture with the belt around my waist. Then I was going to run away. <laughs> I was going to steal the belt. Um, yeah, Chris, Probably best. <laughs> <laughs> he, oh, yeah, he would have caught me easily. I'd have yeah. like, been running like this, and he would have been <laughs> caught me quick. So... <laughs> but yeah, Christian Tapia, um, just one of those guys that that uh, uh, Puerto Rico man, just like Gawin, like these like Puerto Rican fighters are so full of heart and soul, like so full of that will, that representation of their country and their pride and their people. They do it for their people, every single one of them, and Gawin especially, and Christian Tapia, Christian Tapia especially, um, just a great boxing ability able to move his head extremely well. And again, young fighter that works the body. Like Philadelphia represents um, so much as far as giving their uh, boxers the, the tools, the fundamentals to win. And a lot of Philadelphia prospects use those tools. So shout out to Christian Tapia. Yeah, I, I really like what Hard Hitting's doing here, too. I mean, they we don't get a lot of one-sided fights out of their cards. I mean, we get we get some some brawls, and we get some real fights out of there. Um, and a lot of these guys, you know, you're considering them prospects. They're, they're, they are really good prospects, and they're putting them in there against real competition, young. And, and I mean, it, it seems like that's the way you come up in Philly. It seems like, you know, we talked about this earlier with uh, Tevin Farmer having his losses early in his career. Um, we talked about this before with Isaiah Wise, another really good prospect who's uh, come up, run up against Anthony Prescott a couple times. And Anthony Prescott, yeah, I don't know if you can consider him a prospect anymore because of where his career is, but Anthony Prescott can fight. You know, anybody who thinks he can't doesn't know what they're talking about because he's a good fighter. And they put Isaiah Wise at 8-0 up against him. And that's a real challenge for these guys. Uh, so it's always fun to, to get to these local fights and see these prospects really get challenged at a young age, um, force them to grow. You know, like you were talking about with Brandon Pizarro, he's got a lot of lessons to learn from what happened last night. Um, he, come, he came up with the, with the win, and, you know, he, he does look really good, but he does have a lot of growing up to do, and it'll be fun to see him learn from this. Absolutely. Shout out to Dan Hewitt. He is in Texas. Dan Hewitt from Into Boxing, all the way from the England. He came all the way across the pond and dropped in in Texas, announcing that LT Grey Promotions card tonight, uh, going down in Humble, the Simric Center in Humble, Texas. So, Shout out to you, sir. We will tune in and, and listen to your, your um, what are they called? The tones, the, the what is that called? The tones, icy tones, um, velvety tones, your voice. I don't know. Your good voice over the microphone, sir. So, <laughs> <laughs> Isaiah Wise fights December 6th uh, on a Kings promotion card at the 2300 Arena. So, okay. Nick, Nick will be in press row. No, you won't be in press row, will you? Why not? That baby. December 6th. On a Thursday? The baby. Isn't it? Th wow. On Thursday? That'd be pretty cool. Thursday night fights? I thought that's what that's the uh, I thought that's what the announcement set up on. Uh, they had a big board in there. 2300 Arena was announcing all their next, maybe ninth. Uh, we, will, we will see when this baby decides to show up, I guess. That's we the are baby. entering the home stretch here. That baby. Uh, it's, December, it's December 7th, by the way. Okay. So, so it's Friday. Friday night. Yeah. Okay. We will be in the house, 2300 Arena. <laughs> Absolutely. Christian Tappy is back. Christian, we just talked about how awesome you are, sir. All these guys, they show up like five minutes after you're done talking about how awesome they are. I know, right? Literally, <laughs> you're done talking about how good they are, they show up. Yes. So go in and touch the live and then rewind to your part, and then you can hear about, talk about how awesome you are. We covered pretty much all of the fights, correct? I mean, we had, um, we did, we covered all the fights. Uh, real quick, is Dan Hewitt still here? Dan Hewitt looks like he is still here. Let me look. Let me just check. Dan Hewitt is not here right now. Ah, okay. 
Dan, where you at? Oh, that's all I got. <laughs> <laughs> so, but yeah, again, uh, can't wait to continue to work with hard hitting in the future, uh, get there and just promote the prospects. Cause they're, you know, they, they have, they announced last night, they signed this, uh, uh, the, the princess, the Israeli princess, uh, She's now in Philadelphia, and they signed her to Harding Promotions. She's supposed to be a really good boxer. I haven't seen her yet, but we shall. And, and um, you know, they're, they're signing good prospects. They have a good eye when it comes to signing prospects, and I guess they're getting advice from a lot of the good boxing pundits in the area because we have, again, a, a very, you know, deep, rich history of which uh, Philadelphia Manny, – Manny Rivera, we were having a conversation at the press conference, uh, and he said that uh, – you know, um, Philly at one point was known as the Mecca of boxing. And, yeah. and uh, we we want to get it back to that status. And pff, I'm in. We're in. <laughs> we are so in on that. And they're making all the right moves to do that. And shout out to them, man. Absolutely. Congratulations again to Hard Hitting Promotions for a great night last night. Great card. Uh can't wait till their next one. Do we? Do they have the next one scheduled yet? Or I think it's, I think it's 2019. I don't think they're doing one in December. So, um, okay. But we will know, and we'll be the first one of the first to know, and we will be one of the first to promote it. And then you guys will be the second to know, because we'll be the first to know, and we'll tell you. Right, and then you tell somebody, and it'll be third and fourth and fifth, and then if everybody knows, Philadelphia becomes a mecca of boxing again. Boom. That's how it happens. That one, Rose. Oh, real quick. Go ahead. Oh, okay. Gowan, Gowan Rosa makes comment. He says, thanks, guys. I'm truly grateful to you guys. Philadelphia, I can't wait to be back. And I'm catching my flight uh, home now. Have a wonderful day, guys. Gowan going back to Ocala, Florida. And then on the next flight, he'll be back up and we'll see him again. And we cannot wait to see Gowan defending that NBA Intercontinental Super Featherweight title. I can't wait. Uh, I just want to throw a shout out for tonight. Uh, Jarrell Miller's fighting tonight. Big baby. Big baby. Big baby. He's fighting on a, on a kind of interesting card. You got Gabriel Rosado, you got Brandon Rios, and you got Clarissa Shields on this card. Um, you know, Miller and Shields obviously still relevant today. Bam Bam and Rosado. But Bam Bam and Rosado can still give you an entertaining fight. I believe that fight's on Da Zone if you guys want to catch it. Um, I don't think we're going to spend too much time on this just because. None of this really looks I, – I think the most interesting fight on this card is actually Shields versus Rankin. Okay. Um, Shields, Shields is lining up for Hammer. And before that fight happens, Shields looks like she has a lot of growing up to do. Um, so seeing her against Rankin today will be interesting to see how she handles that test. Uh, Jarrell Miller's fighting Bogod, Bog, Bogdan Danu. Um Okay. Oh. <laughs> I mean, yeah. Too big, too fast, too strong. Uh, Jarrell Miller wins this one probably pretty early. He's got to eat tonight, so he'll be done by three rounds. Okay. Uh, uh, but Rosado and Rios. Uh, Rosado's fighting Luis Arias, and then Ramon Alvarez takes on Bam Bam. Uh, both those fights might be pretty entertaining. So mm -hmm. if you're around, you got nothing better to do. It's kind of a slow week in college football. I get it. Uh, might want to check that card out. Gabriel Rosado, who's he fighting again? Uh, Luis Arias. They have they had bad blood at the press conference, so yep. that could prove to be a slugfest. Quite, and that's how Rosado, Rosado works, man. Uh, he gets it, so that fight could prove to be extremely entertaining. Extremely, yep. definitely a card worth watching. Look, all cards are worth watching until they don't give you a reason to watch them. I don't know what that means. But ah. <laughs> you see what I did there? <laughs> I, don't, I, don't, I don't know what happens. Come on, you know what happens. I'm out of here. So Where you go, everybody? Shout out to you, Nikolai Luthor, the Demented Mind. Thanks for tuning in. Thanks for interviewing me and talking to me about the fights. You guys, thank you so much for everyone that showed up last night um, to 2300 Arena and, ch and, and watched this fantastic hard-hitting promotions card. Uh, we've been doing it as... Myself, Nick, a lot of other people from the city that are involved in this have here, and it most certainly didn't didn't disappoint. And shout out to all them guys there, and they put on a fantastic. I can't. I know we've said it ten times. I'll say it eleven. They put on a great show. They showed up. They showed out. They did their thing, and we are well on our way. 
you know, with hard hitting promotions, uh, spearheading it with all the other, you know, Broad Street Firm and, and George Hansen. And then and you got Wallow267 and Gilly the King and all these people. And, and not to mention just all the fighters from last night that, that are just pushing um, the stigma of the downtrodden Philadelphia boxer and boxing scene. And they're bringing to light how much talent and how many people uh, in this city love boxing and how good we are and the trainers we have here, the support system, the families, like everybody's, uh, everybody supports everybody when it comes to boxing and all the events we got going on here in Philly. So we will be at the top again. The city of Philadelphia will be known as the Mecca of boxing once again, guaranteed. I mean, it's evident by what we see, uh, all the things they're doing, all the things at Harding Promotions and so forth are doing to make it that way. And there's other promotional companies doing the same thing in the city in the city of Philadelphia. And we'll get to those. We're going to do those events. And we'll showcase their boxers. And you'll hear their names. And you'll see that soon enough. We will be number one again. Thanks for tuning in, everybody. We appreciate you.